CBS Radio Mystery Theater presents... Come in. Welcome. I'm E.G. Marshall a man fascinated by the great love stories of history. Recall, please, the tragic story of Archduke Rudolf of Habsburg and his inamorata, Marie Vetsera. In the year 1889, they died at Meierling, the prince's hunting lodge near Vienna. How did they die? No one really knows what happened at Meierling. Multiple theories exist. Not one of them proved. David, if we can find out what really happened at Meierling and why it happened, we'll know what to do about us. Kill ourselves? Well, that's what Marie and Rudolph did. We don't know that. Somewhere they took a wrong turn. Whatever happened at Meierling was because of them. They'll show us how not to take a wrong turning. <laughs> Our suspense drama, Meyerling Revisited, was especially written for the Mystery Theater by Nancy Moore and stars Marion Seldes and Paul Hecht. It is sponsored in part by Buick Motor Division. I'll be back shortly with Act One. Today, the hunting lodge called Meierling is a nunnery. But the room where Rudolph and Marie died, by whatever hand, is kept as a shrine. Romantic and curious tourists come there often. On a day not long ago, there came a pair of young Americans. Kitty Scott taught English in a Viennese school. David Carlton, on a tour of Europe, met Kitty, fell in love, and stopped touring. On the day they made their pilgrimage to Myerling... Oh, but this is Kitty's story. I had read everything I could find about Rudolf and Marie Vetsera. From the very beginning, I felt a kinship with Marie. More than sympathy and fascination with what happened to her. Oh, much more than that. As if... I know it sounds foolish, but... As if it had happened to me. After I fell in love, the feeling was stronger. On that spring morning, when David and I, holding hands, stood in front of the nunnery, it was almost overwhelming. What are you thinking, Miss Kitty Scott, with the large blue and lustrous eyes? Ah, you'd laugh at me. Your hand, suddenly cold. Yes, put your arm around me, please. Oh, nothing I'd... Darling, you're shivering. What's wrong? What is it? Well, it's just that it... Oh, if we could just be in that room together, we might find out what really happened there. Sweetheart, it was all so long ago. I mean, does it really matter? Yes, I can't explain why, but it matters. Kit, what is with you? You've been here before. I mean, what's so important this time? Well, I I, I just want you to see it. No, it's more than that. And what do you mean, we'll find out what happened? Because we're in love the way Rudolph and Marie were in love. If we can find out what happened to them and why it happened... We'll know what to do about us. And that's why we're at Meyer. It isn't crazy, honey. We're like them in other ways. There's a parallel. Your father will try to stop our marriage. Rudolph's father did exactly the same thing. Kitty, there is no parallel. We're just ordinary people. Rudolph was a prince. His father was an emperor. Well, your father gives commands like an emperor. (laughs) Yes, he even has an empire. An empire that you'll inherit. If you don't marry a penniless nobody named Kitty Scott. I am marrying Kitty Scott. Now, didn't I write him that? What do I care about his damned oil wells? You say that, but you don't really mean it. Oh, sure, I'd like a little money. Who wouldn't? There's got to be some way to get around the old man so he won't completely disown me. But I think Rudolph and Marie will tell us what to do. Kill ourselves? Well, that's what they did. They died. That's all we know. But they did take a wrong turning. And they'll show us. How not to take one. How the devil will we find out about wrong turnings just by standing in a room? I don't know. 
I only know they have something to say to us. I know. The Mother Superior smiled and opened the door to the sanctuary. The very large room was empty, except for the shrine. I closed my eyes, trying desperately to understand what had happened there. Nothing came to me. Nothing. And then... Then... For every individual, there is a moment in life when the soul dies. This is not necessarily the moment when he reaches his physical end. the words, and how certain I was that I had heard the voice of Marie Vetsera. When I told David about it, he didn't believe one word. Now, let's have that again, Kit, for, for every soul. No, no, what? no. For every individual, there is a moment in life when the soul dies. Whew, what an imagination. Oh, I swear I didn't. Ab- Wait a minute. Huh? I can prove I didn't imagine it. Rudolph's mother said those exact words. W- what, Kit? I read them somewhere. I remember now. Well, well, then don't you see that that's what made you think you heard them? Not a voice from the past, but something called up out of your subconscious. Only you mixed it all up. The Empress said it, not Marie Vetsor. But Mary must have said it, too. You see, it's a key for us to unlock the past. Come on, Kit. You're trying so hard to identify with David, Marie. David, that... identify? But I do. I have, ever since I first heard her name, and today more than ever. Could I be Marie Vetsera? Reincarnation? Well, if this makes me Rudolph, no thanks. He shot his girl and then himself. We don't know that. Well, we do know I'm not about to shoot mine. Oh, don't tease me, please. You're serious? Good Lord, Kit. Living more than one life? I mean, do you believe in that stuff? Well, I've leaned toward it for a long time. If we've left something undone in one life then maybe we've got a chance to finish it in the next. Or if we've done something wrong, then we're given a chance to make it right. My Liebchen, my little Marie, yours is the face I was born knowing and shall die, see. Trust me now. Bulgaria is the answer for us. All will be well. It happened to you again, didn't it? I was with Rudolph. He told me to trust him. You believe you're Marie Vetsera? Yes. I do. I did believe it. And I knew I'd been given another key. Bulgaria. What could it mean? I hadn't the faintest idea. But I did have the utmost faith that some way, the different keys would unlock the past. Driving back to Vienna, I couldn't stop rehearsing all I knew about Rudolph. Franz Joseph wouldn't let Rudolph have anything to say about politics, here or abroad. Some books claim the prince was a weak. Others say he was a man of vision, ahead of his time. Didn't you tell me he believed in World Federation? Yes, he did. He had the mind to accomplish marvelous things for Europe. But his father wouldn't let him be anything but a puppet prince. Franz Joseph demanded absolute submission for everyone, especially his son. Yes, like my father. And Rudolph kept trying to break his chains. But he couldn't. The last two years of his life, he just gave up. Gave up, drank, took morphine. <laughs> Kid, is that me? No, thank the Lord. And then, Rudolph met Baroness Marie Vetsera. And David met Miss Kitty Scott. And they fell in love on sight the way we did. And just think they'd only known each other three months when they... When they died, yes. Well, we've known each other three months to the day, and I don't much care for that parallel. But I don't either. But I see them like us. Happy. Full of hope. <laughs> Certain they'd be married. Uh, hold it, hold it. Not like us. I'm not married to anyone. He was married to Stephanie. Now, how could he and Marie think they could possibly marry? He said the Pope refused Rudolph a divorce. An annulment. Oh, David, wait. Bulgaria. I've just remembered something. Around that very time, the Bulgars were looking for a ruler. They wanted a czar from one of the great ruling houses of Europe. 
Not just for prestige, for protection. And they sent envoys to Rudolph in secret. They knew he was restless and he wanted to get away from his father. So they came to sound him out. Would he be interested in the crown? Oh, I know they came. And, and that's why he and Marie were so happy. Kid, you don't know any such thing. Well, not yet, but we're going to the soccer hotel. To the room where they stayed. Maybe then I'll know. First we stopped at David's hotel. He was expecting word from his parents. He got it. A telegram from his father. Oh, listen to this. Mother and I arriving today from Paris by car. Reserve suite of rooms your hotel. We'll expect the girl to meet us there at 3, you at 3.30. No excuse acceptable, Dad. The girl? <laughs> Why didn't he say the fortune hunter? That's what he thinks. No excuse acceptable. None ever is. Oh, why did I ever write him that we wanted to be married? Well, they're your parents. You were honest. I wasn't honest. I'm under his thumb like Rudolph was under the Emperor's. We should have married and told him afterwards. And be disowned? I don't care. Oh, darling, you do care. I should have known he'd... You don't think I'll stand up to him, do you? I think Marie and Rudolph will show you how to stand up to him. Next stop, the Saka Hotel. The hotel room had been kept exactly the same as when the lovers were there together. David and I stood where they stood and waited. There was such a stillness, but nothing else. David finally said we might as well go, and as I turned, it... My angel, Marie, do you see what Bulgaria could mean for us? There I would be a true prince, all my beliefs put into practice. But would they have me as well? Oh, yes, my love, yes. Bulgaria is Eastern Orthodox. The church recognizes divorce and would grant me one. My Marie would reign beside me as Tsarina. Oh. But we must not hope too much. The official offer to be Tsar has not been made yet. There is not such a thing as too much hope. All the same, the Royal Council may not find me acceptable. Not acceptable. You. Even if I am, and my father learns of the plot, you know what it would mean? I won't think of it. Not only banishment, but trial for treason. I would lose Bulgaria. And worse, lose you. Are you willing to risk it? There's nothing in life I would not risk for you. Oh, who now? Yes, enter. Your Highness. Yes, what is it? Imperial Highness. I bring a message from Her Majesty. She will receive Baroness Vespera today at three o'clock. Alone. The prince is not expected. Haha, <laughs> very neat. Marie has an audience with the Empress at 3 o'clock. Kitty has an audience with the Carlton at 3 o'clock. You still think it's all ridiculous? Hey, will Marie win over the Empress? I don't know. How could I? But maybe if we go to Hofford Palace... Oh, no, come oh, on. Oh, please, darling, please. <sighs> Next stop, Hofburg Palace. David, this is where Marie came. Here. This room, I feel it all around me. Oh, how young you are. Seventeen only. Oh, how young. I'm older than my years, Your Majesty. I pray that is so. Only a woman could accept what I must say. I implore you to believe me. My child, count yourself fortunate that you can never be empress of the Austria-Hungary Empire. It is a burden for an empty honor. But I have no wish to be empress here, Your Majesty. No, but I thought you... You thought your son and I longed for this throne? Once, perhaps, but no more. I pray you, then, believe this also. Count yourself fortunate, too, that a marriage between you and the Archduke is impossible. Not because of the Emperor's refusal or the Holy Father's. It is... It is because the Prince who showed such promise now is... I cannot find words. Surely you cannot want the weak, desolate man he has become. 
surely you will give him up? No, I do not want a weak and dissolute man. Oh. For every individual, there is a moment in life when the soul dies. But this is not necessarily the moment when he reaches his physical end. My poor son, Rudolph's soul is dead. Your pardon, Majesty. If he were as you say, no, I would not want him. But I know his true nature. He is strong and noble of heart. And I will not give him up. Well, let us approach this commentary with caution. I think we are bound to speculate on the gap between reality and illusion. Just what have we here? Pure fantasy? A trick of memory? History rewritten, bent, and reshaped? Emotional odds and ends of a romantic young woman? Or is this... Can it be reincarnation? Perhaps I make no promise will be answered in Act Two. I don't mean to suggest that Kitty Scott is deliberately tampering with the truth, but I do have questions. For the moment, let us accept as fact the Bulgarian proposal. Archduke Rudolph surely knew that his acceptance would precipitate a constitutional crisis leading to civil war. Was it not madness for him even to consider... Wait. There was madness in the prince's house on his mother's side. So, a brilliant man, but emotionally unstable. My apologies, Miss Kitty. No more questions. Now... I didn't tell David what the Empress and Marie had said to each other. We went next to the Emperor's private quarters. First to a Spartan monk-like cell with only an iron cot where a reigning monarch slept. And in the adjoining room, without meaning to, I said out loud, this is where Maria Vetsera came in secret and saw the Emperor alone. Hello. The Baroness Vetsar. Your Majesty. You may rise. How is it you pay homage to your emperor, yet refuse to obey the order I sent regarding my son? You are my ruler, sire, by the divine right of kings. Your son is my ruler by the divine right of love. Impudence, insolence. No doubt you vow that the prince loves you above all else, including the throne. I do. He does. Do you know how many loves he has had? He has lost no opportunity to bring shame and dishonor upon this house. He cannot wound me, sire. They were before he met me. There will be no other. You flatter yourself. I pray you believe ours is a great love. Rudolph is my destiny. And I, his, help him. Co- Am I a bourgeois tradesman to deal with a chit of a girl? Your great love is finished. Never. If not by you, by me. I will take such measures as are necessary. One week hence, if my order is not obeyed, banishment. I knew what David would say as soon as we left the palace. He said it. And said it again while we drank hot chocolate at the sidewalk cafe. You really are spaced out on this, Kitty. I mean, don't you see what you did this time? Hallucinated an 1889 version of what you think my parents will say to you. I know it's possible, David. Maybe I did. But couldn't what I heard be a warning to help me know how to answer your parents? Well, now that you've been coached, will you answer like Marie? In slightly more modern language and edited somewhat. Hey, when when you hear those characters, uh, what language do they speak? Well, English. Aha, uh-huh, got you. Now, if they were the real McCoy, they'd speak German. Not necessarily. The court spoke English. It was very fashionable. Well, darned if you don't always have an answer. Darned if you don't always have an objection. All right, answer this one. Marie was 17, Rudolph 28. You're 22 and I'm 30. Oh, darling, that's hair-splitting. Why don't you want to believe I was, Marie? <laughs> I'll answer. 
You fight so hard against it because you don't want to be like Rudolph. Well, do you blame me? I don't fight anymore. They're trying to help us. They owe us, huh? Oh, us? We owe them. The mistakes they made, their karma, can be put right by what we do. Yeah, but where's all the big helping hand you claim they'll give us? No, no, I'm sorry. I don't buy any part of it. Even with that shocker imagination of yours, you'll never crack the Myerling mystery because you can't get around the fact that they just plain died. And what can that possibly say to us? No, I... I couldn't get around the fact of their death. But we were meant to understand why they had to die. I was absolutely certain Rudolph and Marie were trying to tell us something. Send us some message. David and I discussed it a little more, getting nowhere... And then it was time for me to see his parents. What a relief when I walked into the Carlton sitting room and only his mother was there. My dear, we're to have a few minutes alone. And I'm so glad. Frank doesn't often indulge me when I ask for things. Or when I ask for this time, to my surprise, he, he went off to look at the Danube. Is it as blue as the song says? Well, I think so. But David thinks I have a shocking imagination. How pretty you are. Oh. May, may I call you Kitty? Please. Now, tell me, how is my Davy? Well, he was wonderful and happy until his father's telegram. Well, I can't pretend I'm surprised. I know Mr. Carton wants a more glittering match for his only son than a penniless schoolteacher. What does Davy say of that? Well, you know what he says. He wrote it in his letter. That he'll marry you regardless of anything his father threatened? Yes. Davy had to know his father would come here. There was time to marry you before we came, but he didn't. Oh, my dear, I'm so sorry I had to hurt you. But I know full well he could have married me, Mrs. Carson. Shall... Shall I tell you why he didn't? It's happening again. What is happening? A sense of... Déjà vu that all this has been played out before. You said I'm very young. I have to answer that I'm... Older than my years. I pray you are. Because I must hurt you again. And only a woman could bear it. Kitty, David will be very wealthy one day. I know, I know. And one day, he'll be altogether like his father. No. Already, it has begun. Davy will have no time for his wife, any wife. She will only be a possession. A piece of property valued far less than his oil wells, his stocks and his bonds. Would you want such a husband? No, I wouldn't want such a husband. Then be glad his father won't permit the marriage. If he's crossed, he'll disown David. And my poor Davy could not survive that. Oh, Frank, you're back so soon. Well, the blue Danube is not blue. Oh, I'm so disappointed. Oh, Frank, this is Miss Kitty Scott. Oh, good Lord, Liz, I know who it is. How do you do, Miss Scott? Good afternoon. Mrs. Cotton, uh, could I ask if your name is Elizabeth? Almost. It's Lizbeth. Oh, and Mr. Cotton, does Frank stand for uh, Francis? Yes, used to wish I had a more distinguished name. but (laughs) Now, enough time wasted calling the roll. Liz, will you go check out the Blue Danube yourself? Miss Scott and I can deal with the business at hand. Now, off with you. Yes, Frank. Kitty, I do so hope we meet again. I hope so, too. Now then, Miss Scott, you know why you're here. It's useless to pretend you don't. I've no intention of pretending. But before the business at hand, I have a message from David. He won't be here at 3.30. He wants a report from me first. It's a very fine show of independence, but I'm not impressed. He's tried it before. Doesn't work, doesn't last any more than his fly-by-night love affair will last. You really don't waste time. Not time, not words, not money. Then I'll spare you the time and trouble of saying that I'm a fortune hunter. Which you deny, of course. Mr. Carlton, I fell in love with David before I knew he was the wealthy son of a millionaire. David is not wealthy, not yet. He has only what I choose to give him. But I ask you to believe I don't care about the money. Please believe. I do love him, and he loves me. There have been other pretty girls, quite a few. 
Has he told you about that? They're not important. They were before he met me. Oh, you flatter yourself. He won't love anyone who causes me to cancel his allowance and change my will. What would you say if I told you David is my destiny and I his? <laughs> Theatrical nonsense. We make our own destiny. But you mean to make David, not allow him to make his own. You order me to... Give him up, yes? Unfortunately, I have no authority to command you. I hoped when you found you weren't acceptable, you'd break off this affair of your own free will. I'll deal directly with my son. There I do have authority. The discussion has ended, Miss Scott. The audience is ended, sire. Good afternoon. Oh, David, I was so awful. You said I might win him over. I, I, I didn't even try. To me, he was Franz Joseph, and I knew it was hopeless. I was as cold as insulting as he was. Oh, honey, I made things much, much worse. No, no, now I stop could... it, Angel. I shouldn't have put you through any part of this. Now, it's my problem, my family, and I'll handle it. Now, while you were gone, I sat here and got my head together. I don't give a damn what my old man says. There'll be one answer to everything. Keep your lousy fortune. I am marrying Kitty. She's my fortune. Darling. Oh, darling. You've never sounded like this before. Never sure like this. I mean, the same words, but oh, a different tune. Yeah, well, thank you, mystical friends. Fact or fiction, they did help. I see now that if Rudolph had had the gut to give up the throne, any throne, if they just walked away, gone to, well, America, they could have lived happily ever after. So kiss me. <laughs> you, you want some more proof that they aren't fiction? Yeah. Now listen to these names. Mm -hmm. Elizabeth. Elizabeth. Francis. Bond. Hey, hey, if you're secretly named Mary and my name turns out to be Randolph, I'm converted to reincarnation. <laughs> well, my middle name's Vera. <laughs> Will that do for that setup? No, no. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. The Archduke's full name was Rudolph Franz Carl Joseph. Carl. Carlton. <laughs> well, how about that? <laughs> oh, darling. <laughs> It's lovely to laugh again. Well, there won't be a barrel of laughs when I see Dad now and invite His Majesty to a wedding tomorrow. Oh, David, tomorrow? Uh-huh, tomorrow. And nothing on earth will stop us, including a royal decree. I wanted to plan my wedding. Why didn't Myerling come between? No need any longer to learn what happened there. Obviously, there was something more we were meant to understand. This time... This time, I didn't just hear them. I saw Rudolph, much handsomer than his pictures. Marie, small, delicate, lovely. She had just arrived at the hunting lodge, and he was not pleased. The Bulgarian envoys were expected, and for some reason he hadn't wanted her there. In a moment, she knew why. On the prince's writing table lay a pistol and two letters. One addressed to the Empress and the other to his wife. Dear oh. Lord. You were not meant to see them. Uh, suicide. If the Bulgarian offer is not made, yes. I pray the gun will never be used, the letters never read. But in case needed, they lie ready. If you had not come, there would have been a third letter to Marie. You can't mean this. All we dreamed, all we planned. All ended if the Bulgars have decided against me. I have come too close to our dream to go back to the old life. Without you, without an empire, I have nothing. I am nothing. Suicide is all that is left to me. I shouldn't have let you be here alone. Such black, black thoughts. Will you come with me, my angel? I will follow you anywhere. You know I will. But there'll be no need for dying. I believe with all my heart there's a future for us. If not Bulgaria, then will we go far away? No royal decree can stop us. And together, what do we care for a crown? When I see you now, beloved, touch you, hear your voice, the black thoughts are black lives. 
Only you are true. So, the wedding ring, the farewell letters, the pistol, all explained. They did exist there at Maya Lane. But with all the props for a suicide pact, how can Kitty Scott be right that the Archduke did not shoot Marie and then himself? Let Kitty answer, if she can, in what has to be the last act. This is very likely an unprofitable line of thought, but does it strike you that the Archduke Rudolph talks out of both sides of his mouth? At one moment, a fairy prince, the next, a hamlet, that tortured melancholy prince. And I'm still of two minds as to what we're dealing with here, fact or fantasy. Well, if the latter, even fantasy, has its own logic, and within that gossamer framework, Kitty is remarkably logical... Let's let her continue. When David came back, I was so preoccupied with wedding plans and miling, I didn't notice how quiet he was. Of course, I asked if he told his father about the wedding. Yes. Would his majesty come to it? No. Did David care? No. Well, neither did I. I began to tell him about the newest miling revelation. And the moment I finished, another unfolded. In the main room of the hunting lodge, Rudolph stood with the Bulgarian deputation. A spokesman stepped forward and knelt. Our royal council humbly beseeches your imperial highness to accept the crown of the house of saxe coburg Excellency, your wishes are those of my own heart. Uh, your highness, thanks be to God. But let my heart speak further of a companion dearly loved. When last you waited upon me, I told you I would have her reign at my side as Tsarina. Has this wish been given consideration by your counsel? It uh, has. And what is their conclusion? With regret, your highness, such an arrangement will not be possible. The lady is not acceptable as Serena. I see. Then, Excellency, my answer to the Royal Council's offer of the crown is no. Dismissed. The Archduke stood rigid at military attention until the envoy backed from the room. Then his body slumped and he walked slowly to the room where Marie waited. She instantly read his tormented face and knew the Bulgarian cause was lost. Come, deeply. I will hold you close and warm your heart again. Refused. Not acceptable. How could they refuse me? Why? 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 For what did they say? Tell me, I want to know. I must no, know. No, I'm too tired now. So tired. So tired. Please, I beg you. What wretched reasons did they give? Your Royal Highness, such an arrangement is not acceptable. But they could not have found such a one as you not acceptable. I was not acceptable. I have done this to you. Liebchen, your name was not even spoken. I was refused. Archduke Rudolph of the House of Habsburg was not acceptable. And there it ends. Pour me a cognac, please. Yes, a toast. We will drink to a new life and make new plans and not weep for the old. Not acceptable. Not acceptable. Gosh, my love, gosh. All is well. We have each other. Shall we drink to freedom? <laughs> we will go where no trappings of royalty can. To America, the land of the free. We'll be subject to no one there. 
America, my own? No. Oh. All is finished. I tell you, I am subject to the emperor and will always be a puppet prince. I will always be. What madness made me fancy I could be other? What folly made me imagine Bulgaria could be brought off at you and I in Bulgaria or any place? No. 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 You and I and life are finished. You are not to talk in this terrible way. Thank you. you gave me your promise we would go across the world. You vowed you would talk no more of ending your life. My life? <laughs> what life? I care so little for my life. It is not worth the ending of it. I will be a puppet prince. What difference now? God help us. God help us. Marie. Marie, you have been dearer to me than all else on earth. Forgive me if you can. But I feel nothing now. Even for you. Oh, look, Kit, I've had it up to here with two dead people we can't seem to get away from. Now, if any of it's true, why don't I see and hear it? I guess because you won't even consider reincarnation as a, a possibility. That's right, and I'm fed up to the teeth with mysticism and karma and messages that never come. Now, can we please just drop it now? Oh, what is it? Something's terribly wrong. Waiter, can we have another drink Answer here? Answer me, David. All right, I'll tell you. Oh, you don't need to. I know. You gave in to your father. I haven't. Well, well not really. All, all I did was to agree to a delay. A delay of the wedding, that's all. Now, Kit, Dad said if we really love each other, we, we'd prove it by waiting a year. And we'll see each other till... We'll make a date to meet right here a, a year from today. I, I have to leave Vienna tomorrow. But Pete, take, don't look at me like that. It's better this way. Don't you see? I mean, if we marry tomorrow, he'd throw us out. And if we wait, he won't. We, 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 we'll have the best of both worlds. I, I, know, I know what you're thinking. Smiling, big fat parallel this time. Go on, go ahead. Say it. I'm a puppet prince, too. Well, if you think that... I don't what... think it. Rudolph gave up. He chickened out. I'm not doing that. Aren't you? No. A year will pass. We'll write to you each other. Do you really think your father will be any different a year from now? God, what is with me? Why do I lie to myself? I know he won't change. But the question is, will I? Oh, kid. Kid, don't give up on me. I'm nothing without you. Do you know who you quoted just then? What? <laughs> I did, didn't I? Yeah, so where's all the help that he and his lady were supposed to teach us? What's the big message? I guess we can't learn it without knowing all that happened at Marlin. We still don't know. We do know. Never mind what Rudolph said about how he wasn't worth killing. The poor guy was freaked out. He shot her and shot himself. No. Then what? Uh, I'm the one hooked on Myerling now. I've got to know what they have to tell me. Conjure them up again. I can't. I've been trying ever since you told me what you promised your father. And what if we do go to Myerling again? Stand in that room again. It's our last chance to know what they did wrong so we can... So I can do it right. Next stop. Myerling. again. So many come again. And this time she didn't go with us into the shrine. Alone, we stood once more in that fatal room. Almost immediately, the change began. Beside me, I heard David gasp. I felt his hand grip mine. This time, we would be together in the past. Murray, please, Murray. Faithless to all you believe. No, don't. 
to dream, to love, and most sad of all, to yourself. The Empress knew, but I did not. There is a moment in life for every individual when the soul dies. Not necessarily the moment when he reaches his physical end. Marie. Unite in love and death. Prince of my heart, there is life beyond life. We will be together. It is a promise. the way you are now or want you. There comes a moment in life for every individual. Stop it. That moment hasn't come and it won't. That is not the message. Then what is? Have you forgotten we're supposed to be their second chance? If by some wild, wonderful reincarnation we really are those two, then Marie was wrong if we break up. They won't be together in that life or this one. Are you following, kid? Yes, I'm following. The message was for me, not you. I'm to have the courage Rudolph lacked. I have it. Now, at last, I have it. Ah, poor devil. He never got to marry his love. But tomorrow, tomorrow, Miss Kitty Scott, with a large blue and lustrous eyes, will you marry me? Tomorrow I... Marie, take thee, Rudolph. been in the misty regions of imagination or were the 20th century lovers once the 19th century lovers you decide i promised one mystery love story i delivered two back shortly I've been doing a little reading on Myling myself. Marie Vetsera may have dispatched the prince, but she didn't follow him immediately. She wrote three notes, one begging her mother to forgive her. She couldn't live without Rudolph. One to her brother, saying she would watch over him from above. To her sister, do not cry. I go happily. My greatest happiness would be to live in a hut with him. But since it is impossible to live with him, I shall die with him. Our cast included Marion Seldes, Paul Hecht, Joan Shea, and Ian Martin. The entire production was under the direction of Hyman Brown. And now, a preview of our next tale kind of scary when you come right down to it. What, the cat? No, the cat is a cat, but the way Dinah feels about it. <laughs> How does she feel about it? Well, you know what a familiar is. The alter ego of a witch. Hey, what? You're, you're suggesting that Dinah oh, is Oh, don't a be witch. ridiculous, but she read about it somewhere. You know how much she reads and how suggestible she is, and I swear she's got this notion that the cat is... Well, I, I sort of said it already. Her other self. Oh, come on, Joan. Why don't I have to give you the idea that... She talks to herself, Dave. Well, who doesn't if you're alone enough? Out loud? Well, sometimes, like to an imaginary playmate. Well, this isn't exactly the same. The playmate talks back in another voice. You're kidding. I wish I were. Radio Mystery Theater was sponsored in part by Contact, the 12-hour cold capsule.
This is E.G. Marshall inviting you to return to our mystery theater for another adventure in the macabre. Until next time, pleasant dreams. <laughs>